Welcome back to Cactus Core Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. My name is Kevondre. Last time we uh, embarked on a separate timeline, a separate route, I guess, down the uh, the flowchart, um, and we ended up going through a door to the rec room with our partner Alice as well as Kay. Um, and then uh, we found out in the rec room that I'm bad at math. Well, we already knew that. Um, and that there is no god per Alice. Um, but Kay had a good time, so that was fun. Um, and then we got back um, when we heard that one of the uh, AB rooms had been opened. And now we're searching for Quark, similar to before. Uh, on the other timeline, we can't find Quark. So we're kind of going down a similar route that way. Quark! Are you in here? Guess not. Oh, they're sound now. Or they're fucking better be. I tested it before I started recording this morning. So, if there's not sound, it's because OBS is an ass. Damn. Let's try floor B then. Oh, come on, Finn. Don't be like that. thing I decided to record in the morning because I had to turn off the fan because it was going to be loud and stupid. Rude. <laughs> Ten Miyoji's team took the red door. They probably already searched this area pretty thoroughly then. Maybe I'll try the blue door. Back to the rec room. Where we can find more spritzy spritzy. Quark! Where are you? He's not here either. Where the hell did he go? Oh. Oh, Sigma. Any luck? Nothing. I can't find him anywhere. I see. What about you? Never mind. If you'd found him, you'd have said something already. Indeed. I went to the treatment center as well as the Floor B warehouse, but he was not there. Oh well. Let's head back to the Floor A warehouse. Good idea. Perhaps the others have had more luck. Well, did you find him? No, sorry. We couldn't find him anywhere. I see. Are the three of you the only other ones who've returned? Yeah, we're it. I'm guessing you guys didn't have any luck either. Yeah, no clues or anything. I don't get it. With this many people looking, it seems like we'd be able to find him pretty fast. Quirk is only a child. It's possible he's become trapped in a small, enclosed space. Well, wouldn't we at least be able to hear him calling for help? Yeah, you're right. Quark. Tenmyoji's shoulders slumped. He looked old, much older than he'd had when we'd met. I could see tears glistening at the corners of his eyes. For just a moment, I saw in them all of his pain, fear, and despair. It felt like someone had put my heart in vice. And Dio appeared, and the mood suddenly changed. Hey! You guys, come here! Dio? What are you standing around for? They're in the crew quarters! What? Just come on! No. How? Y 
Your heart stops. Your bracelet comes off. There was a roaring in my ears. Breathing? Heartbeat? But my footsteps sounded muffled, as if I was hearing them through layers of cotton. I pressed a shaking hand to Alice's neck. Her skin was still warm, but the only pulse I felt was my own. Looking down, it was clear why. Something had been driven into her chest so far that only the hilt was visible, and the entire front of her body was covered in blood. No one could survive something like that. I forced myself to swallow the stinging lump in my throat and turn toward Luna. Unlike Alice, at first glance she seemed unharmed. As I reached for her neck to check for her pulse, however, I saw a red mark near her jawline. Nearby on the floor sat an injection gun. I already knew what I would find, but pressed my fingers to her neck and waited. Nothing. They're... They're dead. My god! What on earth happened here? That bastard killed them! Who? Whoever it was that killed the old lady in their bee room! You're saying this mystery person killed Luna and Alice? Maybe only one of them was supposed to be killed, but the murderer had to kill the other to keep them quiet. Or perhaps they killed one another. Luna stabbed Alice in the chest, after which Alice attacked her with the injection gun. That's pretty far-fetched. Look. Look at Alice's clothes. Not a sign of a struggle. I don't think they fought. Then were they killed somewhere else and then brought here? No, if that were the case, then there would be much less blood. I guess that's true. Whatever the case, we have too few clues to figure it out right now. We'd all separated to look for Quark. Any one of us could have done it. You mean the killer is one of us? Do you think there's someone else in here? Well... Do you think that Zero Senior killed these two as well as the old woman? Hmm... Oh, give me a break. How can you just sit here around here talking? No point in making a fuss. Are you fucking kidding me? One of us is a killer. I can't think of a better reason to make a fuss. You do realize you're the most likely suspect, don't you? Excuse me? You wait around until the rest of us have gathered in the warehouse, then you kill Alice and Luna. You pretended to be the first to find them, and... Are you saying I did this? I'm just saying it's a possibility. You don't need to get so worked up about it. I like that Fi just casually throws around murder accusations and then gets, like, confused when people react largely to them. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. So if you don't vote, your choice gets set to ally? I guess that means Luna's vote will be ally for this round. Yes, it does. Perhaps that outcome is what the killer was after. They killed Luna, or they killed Alice and Luna for that? Who would Luna's opponent be? Quark and myself. One person is missing and the others bought the farm. I'd say this old fart's the most suspicious one here. You want to say that to my face? Yeah, you killed us so you could get a few more points in the AB game. Are you an idiot? How do you explain Alice? She's playing against Kay, not me. Ah, uh, not quite. Even without his partner, Alice, Sigma will still be able to cast a vote as he wishes. Then maybe that's why Luna died. Maybe they meant to kill Sigma, but something went wrong and they... True, I suppose this is a possibility. But we are engaging in pure speculation here. There is very little to no evidence to support any of this. Well, we should probably head back to the warehouse. We should take their bracelets with us, then. Huh? Do they really matter anymore? Without their bracelets, some of us won't be all, will be unable to open the secondary chromatic doors. You're pretty calm, pal. Too calm. You did it, didn't you? A sterling deduction. I await your further insight. He wears a mask, therefore he is guilty, perhaps? What did you just say? Are you fucking with me? Knock it off. Is there really any point to arguing about this? Agreed. 
We aren't getting any younger here. I apologize. We should return to the warehouse. Alice. <laughs> Come on, Clover, we gotta go. No! I'm not going anywhere! I can't just leave her here. Clover, if you don't vote, Dio might get out. Huh? He's got 6 BP right now. If you don't vote, you'll automatically ally. And I bet my left arm he'll pick Betray. That'll be 3 points, which just put him up to 9. Once he's got that, there's nothing stopping him from opening the number 9 door. I'll try and pick ally, of course. But Dio's not an idiot. He'll try and stop me or get in my way somehow. Dio will have nine points? What are you gonna do, Clover? If you stay here, you might be letting Alice's killer get away. Fine. I'll do it. There's no way I'm gonna let him get nine points. Good. Let's go. Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. I took a deep breath and unlocked the AB room. No matter how hard I looked for answers, all I found were more questions. Who had killed Alice and Luna? Where was Quark? I wasn't in any kind of mood to play along with Zero's ridiculous games, but at this point I didn't really have a choice. I heaved a silent sigh and started toward the entrance to my AB room. Sigma, what would you say to voting ally? I would reciprocate, of course. You have 5 BP. If we both ally, then you will gain 2 points, leaving you with 7 in total. Should you also cooperate mutually in the following round, you would gain another 2 points, bringing you to 9. Conversely, if you were to choose to betray me during this round, you would gain 3 points for a total of 8. In other words, you will be unable to reach 9 BP until the, following, until the round following this one. That being the case, choosing ally is the most logical choice. True, but how many points do you have? Me? As I recall, you and Clover chose Betray in the first AB game. That means you should have 6 BP right now. If you betray me and get another 3, you could get all the way to 9 this round. Ah, uh, yes, that is true, however, escaping as soon as possible is not my goal. But you picked Betray in the first round, didn't you? That was in the interest of my own safety. As I had only three points at the time, the prospect of losing two of them was very unsettling. Now that I have six BP, I have some room for error. Why wouldn't you want to get out of here as soon as you possibly could? Of course I would like to, but attempting to do so would be unwise. Why is that? Isn't it obvious? If I escape on my own, everyone else here will be trapped here forever. Huh? What are you talking about? Have you forgotten what Zero told us? The number nine door only opens once. Once that happens, it's all over. It'll close for good after nine seconds, so if you're not careful, you could get stuck. I trust you remember now? So if someone opens it and escapes... Precisely. Did you not realize? Hmm. Perhaps I shouldn't have said anything. Hey, don't tell me you're planning to just leave us in the lunch, in the lurch, in the lunch. Leave us all in the lunch and take off by yourself. I would never do that. Consider the following. If I did manage to get to nine points before anyone else, do you think the rest of our companions would allow me to leave? Especially knowing that if they did, they would remain here for the rest of their lives? Well, no, of course we'd stop you. You see? Working toward leaving as a group is the most logical choice for me. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. Our time is nearly up. I trust you will choose wisely. Yeah, of course. You too. Okay. Oh shit, that cat wants in. 30 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Cave made a compelling argument, but I still had to make my choice. Would he really choose Ally? 
If I chose ally and he chose betray, he'd have 9 points and I'd have 2. Still, even if he did have 9 points, he might not try to escape right away. The question was, how much could I trust him? How much trust could I give a man whose face I'd never seen? 10 seconds remain until Ambidex Game Polling closes. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's be spicy. Unusual for us to choose Betray the first time, but eh, why not? Round 2 of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex gates now opening. Results from round two of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Betray, 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 ally, betray, betray. Ooh, I knew it, Kay, you little bitch. Little bitch. Little bitch. That's right. Now, Quark's at nine, and everybody else is below nine. Get fucked, Kay. <laughs> so, you picked betray. Leading to a draw, it would seem. You don't feel bad about it or anything? I could ask the same of you. Okay, yeah, I guess that's fair. I had thought that you would choose ally. If I had, then you'd have 9 BP right now, wouldn't you? Nice try, but I'm not going to let you get out of here with that easily. As I told you before, even if I were to reach 9 BP, it would not necessarily leave immediately. I might choose to wait until everyone else had also reached 9 BP. Yeah, well, I considered that. Didn't seem likely. Then you do not trust me. Well. No need to apologize. Trust must be earned in a game like this. Says the guy who told me to trust him so he could betray me. <laughs> Indeed. Clearly I don't deserve to be trusted. The honesty is refreshing, but that's not really the brightest move. Ugh. So you betray... So you chose. So you chose Betray too, huh? If you just picked Ally, I'd have 9 BP right now. Why on earth would I have done that? There's no way Clover would have chosen Ally when you had a chance to betray her and get to 9 BP. Are you an idiot or something? Bunch of smart asses. So you chose Betray? Of course! Luna... Luna's bracelet is already off. No risk of a penalty for her now. That brings Quark's VP up to 9. Are you worried that he might try and get out? Well, if he were to do so, the rest of us would be trapped here. Hmm. Bet you're all pretty happy he isn't here right now, aren't you? Whoa, whoa, nobody's saying that. Maybe you aren't saying it, but I know what you're thinking. Excuse me, let me let the cat inside, because he's going to yell until I do. So, brief intermission. Motherfucker. So many cords everywhere. Get out of the way, cat. Okay. Fuck off. God damn it. 
I think it's easy today. The Ambidex gates have closed. Round three of the Ambidex game will be the star round. Star keys are required to open the gates. There is no set limit on usage of the star keys. The Ambidex gates can be opened as many times as the players wish to open them. As many times as we want, huh? And that means we can play the AB game over and over and over using these star keys, right? So it would seem. All right, well, where do you want to find them? Beyond the next set of chromatic doors. Oh, you found them already? Yeah, that's right. I forgot to tell you guys. Take a look at the map. Boop, boop, boop. There are three white doors in the Floor B warehouse. White doors, huh? Maybe that's where Quark went. Don't know how he would have gotten there, but yeah. The warehouse on Floor B, you said? Yeah, but you're not going to be able to get through them until they open. Oh, I'm a solo. We've still got more than 80 minutes until that happens. Damn. We will need to form groups of colors that can make white. Time we had a look at all our colors, then. Yeah, looks like they've been shuffled around again. Looks like I'm a blue solo. I'm a magenta pear. As am I. You and me, huh? Better than Dio, I guess. You say something? What color are you? I'm a green solo. <sighs> What's with the sad? Get about it. What about you two? Cyan pear. I'm a cyan pear too. Alice and Luna's bracelets have changed as well. Both of them are yellow pears. Then what color is Quark? He's a red solo. In order to open the white doors, you'd normally need, say, red, blue, and green. But, but solos can't group together, right? That's why the pairs are magenta, yellow, and cyan. Magenta is a mix of red and blue. Yellow is a mix of red and green. Cyan is a mix of blue and green. So if you combine magenta with green, you get white and so on. I see. Okay then. We just need to get to the Floor B warehouse with the doors open, right? I'll be taking off then. Where do you think you're going? Anywhere that isn't here. Hanging out with a murderer does not sound like a good time to meet. The guy who insists on splitting up is usually the first to bite it. What? Then again, loners often turn out to be killers. Just what are you getting at, old man? You think I killed them? Maybe, maybe not. But you're pretty damn suspicious. You're trying to start something, you wrinkled old piece of- Hey, knock it off. We don't actually know one of us is the killer, do we? We have no evidence of that, no, but we do know that Zero Senior is one of us. And there is an excellent chance that Zero Senior and the killer are one and the same. Then why did he kill Alice and Luna now? If Zero Senior wanted any of us dead, he could have done it way before this. While we were, I don't know, unconscious, for instance. What's the point of setting up this whole game just to kill off two of your participants halfway through? Then are you saying there's another person in here somewhere? It's possible. I think it might be a good idea for us to all look for the killer. Well, we gain nothing by standing around here. Yeah. I've got to find Quark and soon. If we're gonna search, we should go in pairs this time. How are we gonna pair up then? I'm not going with Kate. If he decides he feels like snapping me in half, there's not a whole hell of a lot I can do about it. I'll go with anyone besides Dio. I don't want to go with Dio either. Fine, he's hardly my first choice, but I'll take Dio. What the hell? Just figured this way we don't have to make this into a huge argument. Besides, I'm going to be stuck with you once we go through the chromatic doors anyway. No reason to put it off. I will go with Sigma. Oh yeah? Would you prefer someone else? No, I guess you're okay. That leaves me and Clover as a pair then. Yep. Looks like we're all set. You bet, A set. Well, take the cyan door on floor A and the blue door on floor B. Alright. 
Clover and I'll take the magenta door and the red in the red door. That leaves us with the yellow and green doors then. Once we're all done, let's meet in the Floor B warehouse, alright? Got it. See you later then. Beep boop beep bop boop bop. There's no one in the infirmary. No cork and no killer, at least as far as I can see. Well, there is someone here. Technically, at least. The old woman. Oh, yeah. She was lying silently on the bed furthest away from us. If it weren't for the bloodstains on her chest and arm, her peaceful expression would have fooled most people into thinking she was just asleep. The blood had dried and darkened and now looked like any other stain. That was when I noticed it. Huh? Wait a minute, look at her wrist! It seems remarkably clean. Yeah, for some reason there's no blood on this part. Maybe she had something on her wrist? A watch, perhaps? A watch? Yes. It was likely removed after she was killed. That would account for the lack of blood splatter on her wrist. A watch, huh? I don't know, it just kind of looks like too wide for the watch. Aren't women's watches usually thinner? You raise a good point. Perhaps it was some kind of jewelry. Jewelry? You mean like a bracelet or... Of course. Why didn't I see it sooner? This is the same size and shape as our bracelets. Look, look, it's exactly the same width. Then that would mean... She was wearing a bracelet when she was killed. She was a participant, just like us. Are you sure? This old woman a player in the Nonary game? Okay, something wrong? Oh, no, nothing. If you're correct, then where did the thief hide the stolen bracelet? We were quite thorough during our earlier search. But I know that I saw nothing and none of the others reported finding a bracelet either. Then that means they're probably holding on to it this whole time. They probably still got it. That would seem likely. No, wait. If they'd been carrying it around, the sensors and the chromatic doors would have picked it up. Without the right combination of bracelets, a secondary door would have never opened. So our suspect is not only a killer and a thief, but a skilled imposter as well. What are you saying? After killing the old woman, they put on her bracelet. In fact, it is entirely possible they are wearing it still. Yes, that would make sense. So the killer is running around with the old woman's bracelet. Yes. And you're telling me they're probably wearing it... Cat, oh, what are you doing? Classic cat shenanigans. And he's just going to be up there now. And you're telling me they're still probably wearing it? Correct. Do you remember what Zero Jr. told us? Something about how the bracelet will come off if the wearer's heart stops? I don't recall the exact words. But in any event, once the old woman had died, her bracelet would have become detached, allowing the killer to easily collect it. Why? So that they could participate in the nonary game, I imagine. What? I suspect the killer was someone who was not originally intended to be a participant. For whatever reason, however, they were willing to go to great lengths to ensure that they were. To that end, they killed the old woman, who was one of the original participants, and took her place. But why would someone do that? That... I have no idea. Certainly they must have a goal of some sort. You would have had to be mad to choose to come here. But as to what that goal is and how the killer intends to achieve it, I'm afraid I do not have even speculation. Hmm. That's... Interesting. Have you noticed something? Well, there's blood all over the old lady's arm except for right there. Since that's where the bracelet was, then the bracelet the killer stole should have blood on it. Right. But none of us is wearing a bloody bracelet. Sigma, please tell me you're kidding. The killer would have, of course, wiped the blood off. Only a fool would walk around with a bracelet covered in blood. 
So you're saying they cleaned it? Yes. Hmm. Have you discovered something? Hey, I know how we can identify the killer. Oh? We just need some of that spritzy spritzy. It doesn't matter how well they cleaned it, there should be some traces of blood left. Aha, uh -huh, I see. That could very well work. We should have everyone gather in the rec room then. That is where the spritzy spritzy was, I believe. Yeah. First we need to finish looking for Cork, though. We've still got the infirmary and everything beyond the green door. Once we're done with that, we can head back to floor B to meet up with everyone else. Understood. Shall we go then? Traveling with K is exhausting because I gotta keep the cup in my hand the whole time. So I'm like doing the controller one handed like to do the continue the conversation. I have a very low bar for what is exhausting, I guess. I see a green door and I want to paint it black. There's three doors here, too. The same as what we found on the other side of the blue door. But... It looks like two of them are already unlocked. So it does. The center and rightmost doors both say open. Perhaps the layout here is different. Hmm. Whatever. Let's take the door on the right first. Boom, 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 boom. Gollum Bay! This place is familiar. What's up there, governor? Huh, what's this room? That looks like a workbench of some sort. Maybe, what, what sort of work? Well, we're here to find Quark, not look at a workbench. You go check at the far end, alright? Very well. Objection over wool. Nothing. He's not here either. Yo, where's the... where's Golem? Hey, Kay! How's it going over there? Kay? Can you hear me? Kay was bent over with his back to me, peering underneath the thing that looked like a workbench. What the hell? I walked toward him as I spoke. Hey man, what's going on over here? Oh, nothing. I bent down and saw he was staring at something that appeared to be a safe. It's empty. Yes. Was there something in there before? No, it was empty when I found it. Was it? Yes. Then what are you doing staring into an empty safe? I was thinking. Specifically, I was thinking about who opened the safe. Wouldn't that have been the team that went through the green door? I think that was Dio, Fi, and Clover? No, that's unlikely. When we met up with Dio, he told us that they'd been in the treatment center. The nameplate on this door says that this is the Gollum Bay, however. So you're saying they didn't go here? I believe that is the case. Which, as you can see, is why I was puzzled. If Dio, Fi, and Clover did not open this safe, who did? Well, there's no point thinking about it. We should get back. Yes, there was another unlocked door, wasn't there? Yep, let's get moving then. Beep, beep, boop, boop, bop, bop. So this is the treatment center, huh? This is the room that Dio visited. Don't you think that's kind of strange? Until now, all the chromatic doors have led to a single room each. So why are there two rooms on the other side of the green door? An excellent question. We can talk to the others later, I guess, and see if they know anything. Kay and I split up and began to look for places where Quark might have been hidden, or small holes he might have escaped through. 
little jellyfish fella. Huh? What are these? What are those? They must be the treatment pods Dio mentioned. The window's all covered with frost on the inside. I can't see in. Shall we open it? Yes, might as well. How about it? Whoa! What? Cork! No. Oh no. His his bracelet, it's oh god. Hold on, Sigma. Calm down. Look at his chest. Can you see it moving? Wh what? I quickly pressed a finger to Cork's wrist. It was faint, but his heartbeat was there. He's He's alive. He's alive. <sighs> What a relief. I'm so glad to know he's safe. I laughed out loud and grabbed Kay in a bear hug, or at least as much as one I could manage. He patted me on the back and shared what I thought might have been a relieved chuckle. But if he's still alive, why is his bracelet off? Zero Junior said it would only come off if you died. Perhaps Zero Senior took it off? What? Why? I have no idea. Then maybe Zero Senior brought Quark here and put him in this pod thing, too. Well, even if he did, we don't have any way to know why. This pod is for medical treatment. Perhaps Quark has contracted some sort of illness. He's sick? What has he got? COVID-19? How would I know that? In any event, we should return and let the rest of our companions know we found Quark. I imagine Ten Miyoji in particular will be pleased. Yeah, I bet. Do you think we can, you can carry him, or...? No, I believe it would be best to leave Cork here. As I mentioned, there is a chance he has fallen ill. If so, then removing him from the pod would be dangerous. The treatment he is currently undergoing could be compromised. Oh. I'll close the pod's cover, then. Is that alright? Yeah. Sure. Wait, um, I just thought of something. Are you sure he's going to be alright? What do you mean? Well, what happens if he wakes up? Can he open that thing on his own? He'll be fine. I noticed a lever inside that can be used to open the cover. So long as nobody locks the pod, he should be able to leave whenever he wants. But if someone locks him in, he's screwed? Yes, that is what I said. But you needn't worry. You see, I have not engaged the lock. Now, we should return to the Floor B warehouse. I imagine the others are already there. Right, yeah. Okay, let's go. A long hallway. Reminiscent of 999. Many, many, many hallways in 999. Meow. <laughs> Foggy playing his greatest hits. You're late! You're one to talk. How much earlier did you get back again? I'd be surprised if you searched at all. <laughs> this is it? Yeah, Clover and Ten Miyoji still aren't back. So, so, find anything? <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Yeah? Well, go on, spill it. I explained to them how we'd found Quark in the treatment center. I see. Well, that's good to hear. Little jerk making us all worried. There is more. And that is? There is still some cause for concern. Just spit it out. Cork may have contracted an illness of some sort. As such, he has been left in the treatment pod. Will he be alright? <laughs> yeah, he'll probably... Probably. Do you even... Whatever, at least we found him. Pretty lucky he's alive, too. What do you mean by that? I mean what I said, genius. I'm glad he's not dead, aren't you? As equivocal as equivoc equivocal nope, as ever, I see. <laughs> How kind of you to say so. So was Quirk all you found? The way you were talking made it sound like there was something else. <laughs> yeah, I'll explain that after Ten Miyoji and Clover get back. There's something I wanted to ask you about first, though. 
When you went to the green door, did you search two different rooms? Two? No, just the treatment center. <laughs> I see. Then what was the other one? What do you mean, the other one? You know where there's that intersection with three doors? Well, when Kay and I went there, two of the doors were unlocked. You guys unlocked the one that went to the treatment center when you went through the green door. But the other one... Who could have opened it? Don't look at me. I told you, we only opened the one that went to the treatment center. Could it have been Zero Senior? I don't know. Hmm. So did you and Kay go through the other door? Yeah. What was in there? Nothing, really. It appeared to be some sort of room for servicing something. That doesn't make any sense. So what the hell was whoever opened that door looking for? Who knows. Tenmyoji and Clover are running rather late. Should we go and look for them? No, there's something I want to check first. It's never easy with you, is it? Says the queen of never easy. Well, let's get it over with. Huh. This is the rec room. Dio and I came here earlier when we were looking for Quark. So why are we here? Was there something here you needed to see? I said nothing and instead made my way over to the cabinet. The cabinet. The... Welcome back, ladies <laughs> to seven is here now. Inside was the spritzy spritzy. I reached in and pulled it out, then headed to the light switch and flipped it. The room went dark and I headed back to where the others were still standing. Whoa, whoa, what is it? You gonna start telling ghost stories or something? Why, are you scared of ghosts? <laughs> You're kidding me, right? And show me how brave you are. Stick out your bracelet. You too, Fi, please. Ah, bracelets. Yeah. I want to see the underside of them. What do you mean by that? I mean the side on the bottom. The side that doesn't have the display on it. Come on, you really gonna make me explain this? I know what you mean! What I'm asking is why the is what the hell you think you Just do it. It's not hard. God damn it, cat. <laughs> God bless. Ugh. Should I also participate? No, you're fine, Kay. Your bracelet is a little different from everybody else's. But I'll join in just to make it fair. <laughs> okay, you know what? It's it's past the normal half an hour anyway and the cat's going to be a jerk face. So I'm going to call it here for this episode. Next time we're going to throw the spritzy spritzy on everybody's bracelets. Um, yeah. So, interesting stuff. I still apparently can't read. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, for the most part it was fine. So, interesting episode. At least we found Quark. We know where he is. Uh, so for future routes... You know, we'll at least have the knowledge of where we know where he's at, unless things change in the other routes, which sometimes that happens too. Well, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the routes. Anyway, so my shout out for this time is a book that I've been reading called Color World by Rachel E. Kelly. Um, the specific reason that I picked up this audiobook was because Shirami Lee is reading it, is narrating it, and I can listen to that woman talk for hours and hours. Meow. So, uh, but the book itself is actually, is, is alright. Um, it's kind of more or less the main character girl basically just becomes rogue from the X-Men, but also she's an empath at the same time. And she's kind of going to a, um, a, a center where they can, like, kind of research that and all that kind of stuff. And she's dealing with the other people who have these kind of baseline powers, right? You know, like one person can make a light bulb go a little brighter. It's nothing really very exciting, but there's meowing as well. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's an all right book, but mostly it's, it's a good audio book because Shirami is great. Also, uh, Todd Habercorn, I think is the other guy. Um, so Shirami does the, the main narration and all of the voices of the women. Todd Habercorn, I think that's his name is Todd Habercorn, is, uh, all of the male voices in the story. Um, and he's good too, but, uh, Shirami is, uh, chef's kiss. So, 
I can I can listen to her forever. So you should you should listen to this book. Sadly, this series seems to be the only audiobook that she's done. So um, you know, read it. Anyway, that's it for this time. Next time we will uh, spritzy spritzy the bracelets. See you then. Bye bye.